Titrations can be used to determine the concentration of a specific ion in a sample solution. Here we'll see how titrations involving precipitation reactions work. Here is a setup for a titration of a solution with an unknown concentration of Cl- or chloride ions. This long tube is called a burette. Burette can also be spelled B-U-R-E-T-T-E. -E. This valve, called the stopcock, is closed to keep the liquid in the burette. When it's opened, liquid will drip or flow out of the bottom of the burette. In this example, the burette is filled with 0 0.100 molar silver nitrate solution. The solution in the burette is called the standard solution. The standard solution has a known concentration. In this case, it's 0 0.100 molar AgNO3. The standard solution can also be called the titrant. In this titration, a solution containing chloride ions is added to an Erlenmeyer flask and placed under the burette. The solution in the flask is called a sample. It's the solution with the unknown concentration. It can also be called the analyte because this solution is being analyzed to find out the concentration of chloride ions in it. In this titration, a few drops of sodium chromate solution are added to the solution. The sodium chromate solution is known as an indicator in this titration. It will change color at what is called the end point of the titration. We'll show you how all of this works. We'll focus on the solutions. We'll dissociate AgNO3 into its individual ions, which are Ag plus and NO3 minus ions. The nitrate ion does not form any precipitates. It's a spectator ion here, so we'll just delete it from our discussion and tidy up a bit. So you can think of the solution in the burette as a source of Ag plus or silver ions. In a titration, we briefly open the stopcock. The solution in the burette drips into the flask, bringing Ag plus ions with it. Let's take a closer look at what happens in the flask as silver ions are added to it. Now we've zoomed into the flask. Silver ions preferentially bond to chloride ions rather than chromate ions. This forms the precipitate silver chloride. Because silver chloride is white, the solution turns to a milky yellow color. As silver ions are added, some will temporarily bond to the chromate ions. This will form the precipitate Ag2CrO4, or silver chromate. Silver chromate is reddish brown, so the solution will turn a slightly reddish color. But silver preferentially bonds with chloride, so as the flask is shaken, the silver ions will leave the chromate ion and bond with available chloride ions, and the reddish color will go away. The solution will turn red momentarily as more silver is added, but as long as chloride is still present, Shaking the flask will make the red color disappear. Added silver ions will continue to bond with the remaining chloride ions. At a certain point, all of the available chloride ions have bonded with the silver ions. Since there are no chloride ions left, any silver ions that are added will have to bond to the chromate ions. The formation of silver chromate precipitate will cause the solution to turn red again. At this point, when the flask is shaken, the red color will no longer disappear. There are no chloride ions available, so the silver will have to remain bonded with the chromate. We say the solution has turned a slight permanent reddish color. This is what's called the end point of the titration. A permanent color change of the indicator signals the end point of a titration. The equivalence point, or stoichiometric point, of this titration is the point where the moles of Ag plus added to the flask is equal to the moles of Cl- minus that were in the original solution in the flask. In most titrations, if the proper indicator is used and the technique is good, the equivalence point and the end point are very close, and they can be assumed to be the same point. 
Once we reach the end point, we must stop adding silver ions to the beaker. This is because we want to know exactly what volume of 0.1 molar AgNO3 solution was needed to just react with all of the chloride ions that were in the sample. We record the initial reading of the AgNO3 solution in the burette just before we start the titration. Then we begin the titration, adding drops very slowly while swirling the flask. As soon as the endpoint is reached, we close the stopcock, stop the titration, and record the final burette reading of the AgNO3 solution. The difference between the final burette reading and the initial burette reading will tell us the volume of AgNO3 solution required to reach the end point of this titration. And this volume will be needed for the calculations used to find the concentration of the chloride ion in the original sample solution.